Hi, I'm Gina. Today, I'm going to be walking you through how to build a visual semantic search application. In this exercise, we're going to start by taking a corpus of images and then using a multimodal model to apply descriptions to those images. Next, we're going to create embeddings based on the descriptions. And then finally, we're going to put it all together into an app that allows you to search images. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Palantir customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We've trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. By the end of this exercise, you will build the following app. So here, you'll see that we have a set of images of pets. So a couple of cats here, a Great Dane, a couple of different tuxedo cats, a gray cat. So what we're able to do here is search for essentially whatever we want, and then we're going to get the most similar results based on the generated embedding of the image description. And so here, if I search for short dog, you'll see I get two different pictures of Oliver the Quirky. And if I search for cat in a box, I get Pippin in a box, and I also get Goji in a box. Of course, in the real world, we'd probably build this app for other use cases, not necessarily house pets. So this could be relevant in many different areas, such as manufacturing or maintenance. So let's get to building. Starting from anywhere in Foundry, we're all going to begin from the same place by uploading images that we're going to use to build our workflow. So from wherever you are in Foundry, you're going to hit Control-J, to search for some sort of existing project where you're doing your work. If you don't have a project already, take a second now to make one. So I'm gonna search for my project, which is Gina Learning Project. Now I'm gonna click on it. And now from here, I'm gonna hit new and I'm gonna make a specialized folder just for this project. Gonna be a folder. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this one to Visual, visual semantic search. Now click into your folder, and now we're gonna start by uploading some files. And so now once you're in your folder, you're gonna hit new, upload files, choose from your computer. So now in this example, I'm going to be using some pictures of pets that I have on hand, but you can use any sort of images for this workflow. You could use pictures of your pets, pictures of your friend's pets, pictures from the internet, so here, I'm just going to select some images and then hit open and make sure you hit upload to a new media set. And now we're going to hit next and then upload. And now we're going to hit done. And now just to make sure we can keep track of things, we're going to go ahead and rename this one. So we'll rename it to pet pictures or whatever your pictures are of. And now I'm going to click into this. Let's see what we've got here. So you'll see here that I have nine images. Of course, you could use more. So just a selection of cats and dogs that I know. All right, so now from here, we're going to continue by working with these images in Pipeline Boulder to use a multimodal model to generate descriptions of these images. So go back to Visual Semantic Search or whatever folder you're working in right now. And you're gonna hit New, search for Pipeline Builder. And we're going to call this one Generate image descriptions. And now we're going to hit create pipeline. So here we are in our empty pipeline builder. Now you're going to hit add foundry data. It's going to be pet pictures. And then you're going to hit add data. So here we are, we have the pictures of our pets. Now here we're going to do something slightly different than what you might have done a couple of months ago in pipeline builder when dealing with media. So before you had to convert it to a table, but now that all happens for you under the hood. And so we're actually going to go straight into a use LLM transform. So make sure you're hovering over pet pictures and then you're going to hit use LLM. I'm going to rename this node to generate image descriptions. Now we have a couple of options. So there's classification, sentiment analysis, summarization, entity extraction, translation, and an empty prompt. Now we're going to use the summarization prompt template. We're gonna to have to tweak it a little bit, but it will be pretty close to what we need. So here, we're gonna click on summarization. Now the context is going to be 
animal pictures. Now, just make sure that if you're using different images that you're reflecting your actual context. So I'm going to say that we should be summarizing in maybe three sentences. Might be a little bit longer than we need, but you can adjust this. Note that you can also do words, sentences, or paragraphs. Now, what column are we summarizing? So we're going to be summarizing the media reference column. All right, so that is a pointer to the piece of media. So we're going to click on media reference. Now for the model, here's where we can adjust the model if we want. I'm going to adjust this to GPT-41, but you can use whatever model you want. And now we're going to hit create prompt. Now you're going to notice that our prompt needs a little work. So what we have is in the context of animal pictures, your job is to summarize the text in the following user method in three sentences. Adhere to these limitations strongly while still retaining the main and overarching points of the text. So let's tweak this quite a bit. So in the context of animal pictures, your job is to, let's say, describe the image. Describe the image in the following user message in three sentences while retaining the main and overarching points of the image. So there we have our prompt. So of course, you could have also used the empty prompt for this, but this prompt mostly worked for us. So here we can see that the output type is a string. Now the output column should not be called use LLM, but should be called image description. And now we're going to hit apply. So now once you've hit apply, you're going to hit close. And now we're going to hang tight while we wait for a preview to show up of the generated descriptions of the images. And so here we can see the image descriptions. So a white cat with black markings is sitting inside a brown cardboard box. Right. So here we have a pretty rich description, even some wording to describe the body language and the attitude of the animals. A large black and white dog. All right, so pretty rich description. And the benefit of having three sentences here is we get something about the main subject, something about the environment, and also something about the expression and the demeanor of the pet. Now we're almost done here. So now it's not enough to have these image descriptions. We need an embedding of these image descriptions. So here, we're gonna click on transform off the back of generate image description. And we're gonna call this one add embedding. And you're gonna search for embedding. So text to embedding. Now the text column is of course image description, the model. You can use any model here. Just keep in mind the context windows. I'm going to use text embedding ADA2. The output mode is simple. And make sure the output column, this is important, is called embedding. Because what we really don't want to do is overwrite the original image description. And now we're going to hit apply. And then close. So now we have to actually output these results. So. From here, you're going to click on Add Embedding, and you're going to hit Add Output. And we're going to be making a new object type directly from Pipeline Builder, so it just saves us a step. So you're going to click on it, New Object Type. And we're going to call this one Pet Image. Now, keep in mind, in this object type, one row represents one image of a pet. But if you are dealing with much larger text descriptions, you might want to chunk before you compute your embeddings. So just keep that in mind. So pet image and for the icon, I'll do a little image. We can give a color to the icon. Now, in case others are doing the same exercise on your stack, be sure to prefix this with your name. So Gina pet image. Now let's take a look at some things that pipeline builder did for us already. So you'll see here that Pipeline Builder correctly identified the type of this column, the embedding column, as an embedded vector. Now, it also correctly identified that media reference is a media reference property and is associating it with the image that is associated with that media reference. Now, there's one more thing we have to do before we save and deploy. So you'll see right now image description is both the primary key and the title key. It's fine for the title key, but maybe not so much for the primary key. So here, we're going to make media item ID the primary key. So hit the triple dots and then set as primary key. And now we're going to hit save and then deploy. And now you're going to get an error. 
So here, if we click on errors, first, we have to specify a target ontology. So we're going to click on open output settings and choose an ontology. Um, most of you will have one. You'll hit save. And now if you get this error, just hit save and then deploy. And now you're going to hit deploy pipeline. Now, if you get this, just make sure you hit import resources and then add reference. All right, now you're going to hit deploy pipeline and you're going to hang tight for a couple of moments while your pipeline finishes deploying. And now our pipeline has been successfully deployed and we're ready to move on. So now because we deployed the output as an object type instead of as a data set, we now have the object already built and deployed. Now, if you want to take a look at its configuration or modify its configuration in any way, you can right click, hit open, and then open an ontology manager. And that is going to take you to the object configuration view in the ontology. So let's click on that. So here we can see that the object is still undergoing an indexing process. So we're going to have to wait another minute or two to make sure that's done. But in the meantime, let's take a look at some things. So if you click on properties and click on embedding, you'll see here that Pipeline Builder automatically figured out that the embedding model that we use was OpenAI Text Embedding Ada 2. And so that's all set, no configuration needed there. And if we go to the capabilities, then you'll see that the media reference property is already associated with pet pictures. So that all happened because we deployed from Pipeline Builder and Pipeline Builder was able to associate media reference with its upstream media set. Now under data sources, we can take a look at how we're doing in the indexing process. And we can see that we're almost done hydrating the ontology. So we're just gonna have to wait another moment for this to finish. And now we have all green check marks here, which means we are ready to proceed. So let's go ahead and build ourselves a quick little visual semantic search app. So from here, you're gonna hit Control J and search for workshop. Now you're gonna click on workshop and here we're gonna hit blank module and we're gonna call this one visual semantic search and hit save. And close this if you see it. So here we are in workshop. And so this is going to be a really simple application. We're gonna get rid of this section on the left. We don't really need it. So we're gonna have just the main body of the app and then in the top part, we're gonna have a search bar. So we're even gonna get rid of the section title. So in the header here, you're gonna hit the plus sign and search for text input. So you're gonna click on text input. And instead of using a label, we're gonna put a placeholder. So type your search here. And take note that this widget produces an output value called text input one string value. So just keep that value in mind. Now we're gonna head over to the variables tab and you'll see that of course we already have one variable here. It's from that text input widget. Now we're gonna hit the plus sign. It's gonna be a new object set, specifically an object set definition. Now you're gonna click on object set definition and we're gonna call this one relevant images. Now the starting object set here is going to be Gina pet image and hit select. And now here we're gonna filter on a property, but not just any property, we're gonna filter on the embedding property. So here you'll see that when I select an embedding property type, the filter options look different than they do for say a string or a number. And so here for the query, I'm going to select text input one string value. And for the K value, so the how many nearest neighbors is going to be, let's say like two. I happen to know that there are two of each animal, but of course, the recommended number of results will depend on your use case. So here we're going to close this. And now it's not terribly helpful to do this search if we don't display the results. So here we're going to hit add widget. And it's going to be an object list. And you're going to click on object list. And the object set is going to be relevant images. All right, so you'll see that we have all the images now. Okay, so here we can see these descriptions because the descriptions are the title key. Now here, we're going to add some properties. So the description is probably a good thing to have. We definitely want the media reference. 
And you'll notice here that the media reference will display as an image. The other thing that I want to do here is I want these to display as a grid. So there we go. Now, instead of displaying the description of the title key, I'm actually going to get rid of that and display it in the as a property. I just find it visually a little better. And so that's our object list. So let's go ahead and search for something like curious tuxedo cat. So you'll see here that I have two results. So that's Pippin. He's in a box. And then here, that is Goji hanging out by the fireplace. And maybe I'll search for something like Great Dane. Now you'll see here I got two results. So the first result is Merlin, who is indeed a Great Dane mix. You'll see here in the image description, it says large black and white dog, never explicitly says Great Dane. And now the second result is Oliver, who is not a Great Dane. So here, clearly our second result is a good deal behind our first result in terms of relevance. And that is our visual semantic search. Of course, we probably wouldn't build this app for pets in the real world, but this could be useful in a variety of real world cases, such as pictures of components or pictures of progress on building or many other sorts of repair or manufacturing oriented use cases. And that concludes our tutorial. Make sure you save and publish. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.